And the simple fact is Christians today, uh, those who purport to be Christians, would rather teach a false gospel and go to Romans 10, where no one uh, can get saved by a prayer, than preach the true gospel, which is Romans 3, and get a man saved. All right, going to do a video refuting Ed Fettinger's claim that the true gospel is found in Romans 3, but Romans 10 preaches a false gospel. I'm going to show you that Romans chapter 10 and Romans chapter 3 line up with each other. So the claim that Romans 10 is preaching a false gospel, but Romans 3 is the true gospel, is ridiculous. Let's check this clip out. This is 32 seconds in. He says that, that you, you are preaching, you're going to go to hell if you preach Romans 10, and you have to preach Romans 3 for salvation. And again, I'm going to show you how Romans 10 lines up with Romans 3, actually. They line up with each other. Let's get right into it. And the simple fact is, Christians today, but, uh, those who purport to be Christians, would rather teach a false gospel and go to Romans 10, where no one uh, can get saved by a prayer, then preach the true gospel, which is Romans 3, and get a man saved. And so you see right there, he says that Romans 10 is a false gospel, but Romans 3 is the true gospel. Well, let me show you something on that. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. It says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Verse 5. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Verse 6, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on, speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Now I'm going to show you how this lines up perfectly with what is said in Romans 3. Because it again it talks about how Christ is the end of the law to everyone that believeth. Okay. Romans chapter 3. Verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 24, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 4, who, for, uh, Whom God hath set forth to be propitiation by, through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Uh, verse 26, To declare, I say, that at this time his righteousness, and yet that he might be the just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. How is this any different than what Paul said in Romans 10? But let's keep reading. Verse 27, look at this. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by what law? By of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Verse 28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Hmm. That's exactly what Paul said in Romans chapter 4, or Romans 10 verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness which everyone that believeth. You know, for the righteousness, uh, but the righteousness which is of faith. It lines up perfectly with Romans chapter 3. You see, because Romans 10 is not a false gospel. Romans 3, I mean Romans 10 and Romans 3 line up perfectly. Romans 10 is still for us today. So to claim that Romans 10 preached a false gospel, but Romans 3 is a true gospel, is ridiculous. Because again, verse 27, um, or verse 28, therefore we conclude that man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And again, I'll, I'll show it again. Uh, back to verse 4. Therefore, or it says, For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness, righteousness to everyone that believeth. They line up with each other. So no, Paul is not preaching a false gospel in Romans chapter 10. It's ridiculous to claim that. So don't be deceived by this hyper-dispensationalist nonsense that Romans 10 is a false gospel. God bless you. Goodbye.